Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Brink of Speed. I'd like to personally thank you for hitting that play button. And I just wanted to bring you guys up to date. I haven't produced uh, a lot of videos in the last week because I was actually out of town on vacation. But I'm back now, and I made this new video today because I wanted to educate people about the myths and history of the C8 mid-engine Corvette. As most of you know, I've made around five videos about this C8 mid-engine Corvette. And out of those five videos, I've received almost 3,000 comments. And there are a lot of people that are saying this is going to end the Corvette legacy. Now, not only is this not true, but it is actually the opposite of the truth. So I'd like to take the time to educate anyone out there who might not know the true history of the Chevrolet Corvette. So let's get started. In the 1950s, there was a man named Zora Arkis Duntoff uh, that Chevrolet hired as their chief engineer. In 1957, Zora was inspired to create a mid-engine Corvette because of the Corvette SS's DNF at the 12 hours of Sebring. This was a big problem and he wanted to find a solution to this. Part of the problem was that the Corvette SS had eight uninsulated exhaust pipes that were cooking the driver's feet. And that was a real issue. So that helped Zor decide that the heat source must be relocated behind the driver's head. So at that point, he realized that it needed to be a mid-engine car. So in 1960, Zora noticed that the new transaxle that GM was building would work perfect on a mid-engine uh, for the second-generation Corvette. Prelim designs showed that visibility and the center of gravity would both benefit from moving the engine to the rear. A number of issues, however, at GM stopped everything from moving forward on the C2 mid-engine production. They even canceled the production of the transaxle. That's a hard word to say. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the mid-engine Corvette was thought up over 61 years ago. But let's continue on. Zora, however, didn't let that stop him. He then pursued and received approval to create a mid-engine indie-style car he called the Serve. C-E-R-V with a small block V8 producing 500 horsepower and with GM politics standing in his way, the serve went nowhere. In 1967, GM came up with the concept car Astro 2, but that died shortly after and was never brought to production. Then, in 1970, the latest mid-engine design came out and it was called the XP882. Unfortunately, though, Chevy had other plans and decided to kill the XP882 program, which made Zora threaten to resign. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? This car has been in the making for over 61 years, and Zora's plans have been squashed at every turn. Next came the XP895, which ultimately proved to be too heavy, and this concept died very quickly. Then, after that, the XP897 GT came, which was a rotary mid-engine Corvette. In 1973, Zora called this his favorite mid-engine Corvette design yet. In 1975, Zora left GM, but his mid-engine passions weren't forgotten. And in 1986, Jim produced yet another concept Corvette called the Corvette Indy. This car was later updated in 1990 and called the Serve 3. So again, the CERV 3. This car was fitted with an LT5 5.7 liter dual overhead cam twin turbo V8 and that engine produced 650 horsepower. And words that were never forgotten came from Zora in 1975 when he left GM. He told Dave McClellan, Dave, you must do the mid-engine Corvette. 
Those were his exact words to the new chief engineer. However, Dave wasn't a believer at all in the mid-engine, and he retired in 1992 without ever doing anything about the mid-engine. A new man by the name of Dave Hill preceded him, and he hired an assistant named Taj Jucher. And forgive me if I've uh, butchered that name. Taj Jucher quietly carried on the mid-engine torch secretly while doing full-size scale models for consideration and even wind tunnel tests. Again, as you can see, these engineers aren't giving up on Zora's mid-engine dream. So you're seeing a pattern here again. For the last now 40 years, GM is trying to produce a mid-engine car. In 2002, GM came up with a Cadillac mid-engine concept car, and they called it the Cien. C-I-E-N. This car looked amazing and was presented at the Detroit Auto Show in 2002. They gave this car a 7.5 liter, 750 horsepower V12. Yet another mid-engine car created by GM that has massive horsepower. From that point forward, GM has tried and tried to produce a mid-engine Corvette and failed until now with the new C8 mid-engine Corvette. This car is going to be Zora's dream and legacy finally coming to fruition. For those of you who are saying that just because this is a new mid-engine car, it can't be a Corvette, this is a perfect video for you because now you are seeing that since 1957, GM has been trying and struggling to come up with this mid-engine Corvette. And they finally have been able to produce one and it is going to be a gorgeous car. This video will also help most people realize that really the Corvette has always been meant to be a mid-engine car. And GM is pretty much just settled for a front-engine car because of, of a number of reasons. Well, that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. I hope all of you enjoyed this new video about the C8 mid-engine Corvette. And I hope it answered a lot of your questions about the history of the Corvette. But other than that, I can't wait to see this new C8 Corvette. I'm going to the Detroit Auto Show to see this thing in person uh, in January. And I just cannot wait to see this car. So uh, like I said, with that, let's wrap this video up. I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I also hope to see you out on the road.